is no ordinary outing at the zoo. It's a very special occasion. We've brought these children together for the very first time because we wanted a glimpse of England in the year 2000. The shop steward and the executive of the year 2000 are now seven years old. In 1964, World in Action made seven up, and we've been back to film these children every seven years. They are now 49. We were looking at England in 1964. And so the idea is whether you could, rather than bring in a load of professionals to discuss England, we brought in a load of children to discuss it. And we were asking them, in a sense, to project forward into, into their lives, whether we could see the sort of country that England was going to become through the eyes of these children, which was a kind of nifty way of saying, well, what's actually going on here? When I get married, I'd like to have two children. My heart's desire is to see my daddy. I did show it here. It was invited to the Los Angeles Film Festival and to the New York Film Festival, and it was received incredibly well. And that was in some ways an epiphany for me. I then sort of realized that I really hadn't been making a political film, that actually I was doing something bigger than that. Our lives are changing far too much, mm. all of us. So you're the laborer? Yes, I'm the, the unpaid laborer, the serf. It was clear to me that I was actually making something much more universal, something more about growing up, getting through the day, all the decisions we make as, as individuals in society. It was a more humanistic document, I think, and it was now getting more and more character-driven. I went to um, a discotheque. He was in the pub earlier on, and that afterwards we went to a discotheque and Tony was staying there. And I just, from there, I just, that was it. <laughs> Couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> we have our ups and downs, no more than anyone else. I think you've got to work at a marriage. I think all marriages go through stages. You can't stand each other. You go through, you know, I think, oh, God, I hate him. I wish he'd get out. <laughs> I do. We've been to the edge of the cliff and looked over a couple of times, and uh, we've always seemed to sort of go back we've sort of stayed the course. But I must say, I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy being married. <laughs> Come on in, Henry, get on. I like to sort of compare it to a Victorian novel. Its characters move inch by inch by inch, but it is, in a sense, the drama of everyday life. It's the heroism of ordinary things. It's not the melodrama of movies or network television or whatever. Tony's five. It's the stuff that we all identify with. And little Pro, she's nearly two. And three. She's three. Oh. And in the middle of a conversation about something completely different, he just asked if, um, if I'd like to marry him. And if I hadn't been listening carefully, I would have missed it completely. The tangerines, aren't they? When we were doing 49 Up, reality television was the 500-pound gorilla in the room because I think it made the subjects of my film really examine what they were into. You can ask me about Ian, and you know full well I'm going to say to you, it's none of your business, I'm not talking about it. Now, there are other people in this programme that don't do that, that quite of their own free will and, and that will talk about their marriages or their divorces or the state of their lives. I don't think you should be into that. I don't think you should even be asking that. It's part of people's lives, and this programme is about people's lives. No, yeah, but that's... See, to me, that's a part of my life that will never go on this programme. You know I'd married. My ex-husband never never took part in this. My partner now will never take part in this. But that's not my fault. No, but that's because that's the way I want it. But it still doesn't stop you trying to get that information from me. A documentary is such a dodgy medium, in a sense. I mean, nothing is true. Um, every edit is a decision that the filmmaker makes. With documentaries more than with feature films, with narrative films, you're saying this is the truth of the matter, that's what your calling card is. I think in the end there are no rules for it other than your own relationship with your immortal soul and your relationship with the people in your film and the relationship with your audience. And she adores Rolf Harris, absolutely adores Animal Hospital. 
and if she's at the top of the house and the music comes on, she runs down the stairs and puts herself in front of the TV. So I think it is simply the own quality of, of your decency as a filmmaker and the trust you ask for from the people in the films and the trust, the bond you build with the audience. You've got nothing unless you've got family in your health anyway. You'd be awfully lonely without family, I think.